All right, folks, I think it's time that we just have an honest discussion. I don't think there's anybody out there that really expects us to default. I think everybody expects us to go to the last minute and the powers that be come together. But let's not be confused. The political environment today is probably or is the most toxic I've experienced as an adult. And the risk of a default is not zero. So what I'm going to do is use my good friend Taylor from Life Goal Investment, who has been on the street for 10 years. Go back to video number two and see all of his education and experience. And I just want to ask him. We're just going to play what if, and I'm going to tell them, hey, we just defaulted. What happens? What, what, what are things that we can look at? Because I have my ideas, but they're probably incomplete and maybe even wrong. So, Taylor, we got to do it, man. The U.S. just defaulted. What happens? Holy smokes. Um, it is an interesting world if the U.S. defaults for a lot of different reasons. But the person foremost in charge of what's going on with us paying bills or not being able to pay our bills is Janet Yellen. And I call her Crazy Aunt Janet, right? She's the <laughs> crazy U.S. Secretary. Aunt Janet. Isn't she, though? I mean, she's like kooky. I usually call her yeah. Kooky Aunt Janet because she <laughs> is kooky and, and awkward and all that. But and, and what I said, I did a video on this um, last week on, on my social media. And I talked about the fact that you'll start to see who kooky Aunt Janet's favorite nieces and nephews are after June 1st. Because what happens is, and it's not a, a stop deadline of June 1st. June 1st is the date at which they estimate, it's not a definitive date, which they estimate bills will stop being able to be paid in full. And right. so what comes with that is Janet Yellen and the Treasury determining what it is that they are going to pay or not pay at that given time. So those bills are everything from $50 billion in Social Security that comes due in the month of June to Medicare, Medicaid, to some of the funding of our military, to paying the Treasury debts, the interest income that pays out to Treasury bonds, all of these things, we will start to have to appropriate money to some of them and therefore away from some of the other ones until at some point, if it takes long enough, all of those bills will be unable to be paid. And then when you take a step back and say, okay, I understand that's what's gonna happen to these underlying categories, what you also take is a massive hit to the reputation of the United States government. And it will be sloganized by people in the Far East, like Russia, like China. Look at this dysfunctional country that is not able to even pay their own debts. And it will become a bigger political landscape on top of just the fiscal worries that we have in the here and now at this point. Yeah, so I've been reading articles, again, very much a real estate guy. I think Zillow or Redfin put out an article over the weekend uh, talking about interest rates would explode higher. They, they actually pegged 8.4%. I actually think the first thing that happens, um, and it might even happen before a technical default is declared, is somebody, S&P did it last time, is some rating agency with clout will downgrade U.S. debt. Right. Will I think Correct. it's currently double A, uh, which I guess the next round is single A. Tri um, so triple A is the top, which is what we are now, and Moody's downgraded us to double A plus in 2011 okay. as we were entering that debt negotiation Perfect. cycle. Thank you for that. Yep. So again, I think the very first thing that happens is a debt down or a yeah, debt downgrade or US, whatever they call it. But that is we I say that like it's a nothing, but that is everything. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. So so what winds up happening when debt gets downgraded on normal season? So let's take it in a vacuum and say a company had their debt downgraded from whatever to the next next level below. Is what happens then is they end up having to pay more in interest on their bonds. Yeah, you're riskier. Someone, yeah. They're riskier. Exactly like someone paying a mortgage, right? If you yeah. have the history of not paying your debts, you're going to have a higher mortgage rate. Now, I say all that and look back in 2001, or I'm sorry, 2011, the last time this happened, it was a little bit of a reverse, which is kind of weird. Over time, what you would anticipate are the U.S. debt levels, the, the, the uh, yield they have to pay on their bonds to be higher, and therefore the overall debt of our country ballooning up because the payments are higher. But in the short term in 2011, what happened was you actually had a rally in the bonds and a decrease in the yields, which wow. is totally counterintuitive, right? You're riskier, and then all of a sudden you don't have to pay – as much as you were in the past, because the flight to safety mm. is still the treasury. So people still look at this and wow. say, everything goes to hell in a handbasket. I trust this person who just didn't pay 
more than to I eventually pay. To, broader, to eventually pay more than the broader economic landscape or than wow. a l- l- broader financial landscape. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I mean, the other thing that might, the other thing I think that would happen again, this is playing the what if game. I don't think a default's coming. We're just having fun with this. Because I, I think gold and, and probably Bitcoin in this example would see a huge bid as yep. people, again, flight to flight to something else. That, that's something yep. else I think that would occur. Yeah. Um, and so the other thing that comes along with this is, again, this is appropriation of dollars. They have a fixed pool of dollars. And, you know, right now, more money continues to come into it. But if that register gets shut and they have to say, this is all the money we have, they have to start determining. The other thing that comes into this are just government employee salaries. And then all of a sudden they go, OK, Michael, I hate to say it, man, but you're furloughed until further notice because we yeah, have they to shut down out- parks and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and you get millions of unemployment, millions, a, a spike up of unemployment based on government workers, and that could absolutely be the initial catalyst if we haven't already seen a catalyst into an impending recession that would exacerbate that in short order. So, you know, it's funny. When you look at both political sides, I don't give a damn about which which way you like, which way you don't like. Right now, it's the Democratic uh, uh, White House is looking at Congress, which is Republican based, who sets this debt limit and says, hey, guys, we need you to increase this for all the, the reasons that we you know, aforementioned. And the Republicans on the other side are saying, we're not just going to raise this. We're going to use this as the ultimate bargaining chip. Mm-hmm. And what we want are things to be changed. They want higher fossil fuel production allowed. They want welfare requirements to be increased. They want some social security spending to come down. So that's the back and forth. But at the end of the day, even the Republicans realize that they want this to be kicked down the line. And unfortunately, that's all it's going to be is the debt ceiling will likely be increased and then we'll face it at a later date. Our fiscal uh, irresponsibility is not going anywhere in the short term. Like that does have to be addressed down the line, no doubt about it, because the debt level is unsustainable and the rate at which it increases is unsustainable. But the Republicans do understand that monetarily or or the markets as a whole, if you default, the cost should go up on your debt and causes our debt to erupt in a big way. So even the Republicans want a deal to get struck here. They just want to use this to get some of the things they want in the short term. Yeah. And then the last thing to kind of wrap this up, let's just say, again, we're playing a what if game that neither of us, I think, expect to happen. We do default. It would be, I would argue, a very short default because the chaos that would ensue. I'm going to guess the market's down, the stock market's down 10% in a day, right? Yep. Wall Street Journal, U.S. defaults, crash, um, you know, and, and, you know, within, within a I don't know, 48, 72 hours, we have an agreement and bingo, bango, it's, it's raised, but it's a self-inflicted wound that we don't need. The, the weird thing about this is, is like the market has to price it to an extent. So you have to price the probability of this playing out. And it's I think non-zero, the, the, right. the market is, is non-zero right now, but I think, you know, maybe they're calling a 5% chance, but the thing is, you're not going to go from a 5% chance to a hundred percent chance until the last day, because everyone yeah. expects them to call each other names, point fingers, and then at the last hour to move it and yank it higher. But if it goes, uh, it's going to be a rug pull. Out oh, absolutely. Right. Cause it, yeah, I don't see anybody getting bought, you know, they got to price it in. That's how the market works. It's going to be three to 7% until it's not. And that right. just means if it happens, it's a, you know, cataclysmic event. So Correct. pretty crazy Correct. to think about Taylor, where can people find you? Yeah, follow us at Life Goal Investments on both Instagram and on TikTok. We we put out a video on this and and all kinds of other current current topics. So awesome. Thank you, buddy.